Hey everyone, Tim Lewis here, back in the stu- This isn't the studio. No, no, it's true. Uh, I've actually moved on to bigger and better things, so I'm setting up shop here in my, uh, my humble abode. I hope you like the background, and I hope you don't miss the green screen too much. Uh, so let's get down to business. Today we're gonna talk about color correction. Basic introduction, getting from one point to the other, very simple stuff. For those of you who have never done color correction in Adobe Premiere before, it's actually very good, actually. Um, let's get started. So I have this project set up here. This is just a, a project that I've been working on for something else. But this video was shot in log. So for those of you who don't know, log is basically this very grayscale type of, it looks like it's very gray and there's no color to it. Basically what that is is that the camera uh, condenses the colors, condenses the, the luma, the luma and the chroma, so that when you bring it into uh, post-production, you can really stretch out the colors and have more room with what you want to do. And I can show you more on uh, exactly what I mean right now. So here we have the log footage here, um, and I have it just under the color um, tab here. And I have, and I usually just have the vector scope YUV and Parade RGB checked here. If anything else is checked, you can just uncheck it. This is just, like I said, very basic overview of color correction. For the, so for those of you who don't know, uh, the industry standard for color correction is using a software called DaVinci Resolve. Um, I myself don't have that. It's a $500 plus software. Um, DaVinci, if you're, if you're watching, <laughs> send me over a copy. <laughs> but Premiere's color correction tool within Premiere is actually very good. Like I said, this is a very simple tutorial on color correction, so for right now, this is all you need to, to really kind of get a grasp on true color correction. There's R, G, B, red, green, blue channels uh, within here. It goes from 0 to 100 IRE, which stands for the Institute of Radio Engineering, I believe. Don't ask me. It's basically kind of the standard that that institute set up back when this was set up in the past. Um, I think it was from 0 to 100 that's that was like the I, an IRE is basically from 0 black to 101 in like a, a classic video signal but we still use that today. Fun fact. <laughs> and then over here you have the, the YUV vector scope which basically shows the saturation of a certain color. We got magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow, and, and red here. So let's start off right here under basic correction. Uh, right here you have input LUT. For those of you who don't know what LUT is, it is a lookup table basically telling Premiere, hey, this color should be this, this color should be this, and this color should be this based on the camera that was used to film. And you can find LUTs for any camera that you have, uh, you know, a Canon 7D. Canon has all the, the LUTs out there that you can download for free. I'll show you the link of where I downloaded my LUT. Um, it's very simple. You just go to here. I have it set here already, but you can go, you know, to browse and you can actually get the file right here. This is the file that I have. And once you input the, the LUT, it actually looks very good. It's a very good starting point for color correction. And if I turn this off, you can see that it was very gray before, and now it's a little bit better, but it could use some work. Um, so we'll get started here. I'm gonna open these all here. White balance is basically, you know, the blues, the orange, green, and magenta. It looks pretty, I'm gonna start here, the RGB parade. This is kind of the basis of color correction for me personally. Um, so as you can see, if I adjust the temperature here, you can see you know the red, green, and blue kind of moving separately. So basically what you want to do with color correction is kind of level it out just uh, as much as you can. You know, there might be like stems here or stems there of a certain color, but kind of just the basic look. Now I'm going to adjust the tint a little bit, and as you can see, that'll move the red and blue together and the green separately. You know, I go back and forth here. So, that looks pretty... So maybe something like that for right now. So that, that, that adjusts the white balance. So for this color correction stuff, it's always good to just work down. Premiere kind of put it together very nicely, so it's just very easy to follow here. Um, exposure, that deals with the brightness of your shot. 
So as you can see, if I lift that up, that'll adjust that. And then I'll, you know, go back down, all the way down. Um, exposure doesn't really need to be adjusted too, too much. Um, it's always good to have the face at about 70 IRE. So let me back up too in case you're confused about this RGB parade here. Basically, it splits the video into three channels, red, green, and blue. And it goes from left to right. So basically, this area is this area right here, this, this kind of red look to it right down here. And as you get to the center, this is his face right here, which is kind of the more in the red area um, and then you know this area is kind of this whole area right here and then it starts over this area is this green area here or maybe it's this and same thing for blue so it's always good to lift up the exposure just a bit um, but you don't want to go too much and uh, so contrast basically darkens the darks or whiten and whitens the whites it really stretches out the colors as you can see here on the RGB parade as I go up it really stretches everything out. Uh, so the higher you go, the darker the darks and the lighter the lights. And the lower you go, the more squished the, uh, the colors look, which kind of goes back to kind of that log look, very low contrast. For this purpose of what this is, this is a video of an interview of a doctor, I would want to go too much contrast, but uh, maybe a little bit, so maybe around, around there. And you never want to have your shadows touch the zero. That's not broadcast safe. Um, nowadays, if you're uploading on YouTube, there's really not that much of an issue, but it'll look bad. I'm just going to have it contrasty right around there. Yeah, that looks good. Um, so highlights basically adjust kind of the higher, brighter areas of, uh, of your shot. So as you can see, as I go higher, it adjusts the highlights. You don't want to have his, his face is a little bit brighter, so you, wanna want, you don't want to have that really blown out too much. So I'm just going to go just a little bit higher. Um, shadows, same thing, but just for shadows. Um, I want to go for maybe about a little bit of higher contrast. I want to go down just a little bit, so that looks pretty good. So that's looking pretty good so far. Um, whites and blacks, basically very similar to such highlights and shadows, but whites kind of affects a higher area of highlights if you really want to get, get more um, detailed. His forehead was a bit bright, so I'm going to take that down just a bit. Um, good, and then I'm going to bring up the whole thing. So, and I'm gonna bring up the brightness for everything just a little bit, or the exposure just a little bit, so that I can bring the blacks down just a bit too, and kind of increase that contrast so it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna bring the highlights just down a bit. And again, this is really based on your preference, what you like. Um, if you shoot in film, film is very contrasty, so if you want that film look, uh, I would recommend upping that contrast as much as you can, but always, like I said, look out for hitting the zero or 100. I'm gonna go back down just a bit. Um, I'm gonna increase the exposure. Cool. Um, so saturation, uh, that's where we can get into the vector scope here. So basically, this white shadow part is a representation of all the colors of this shot um, and how saturated each color is. So this cyan bluish color, um, it's a little bit more saturated than the other colors as you can, I'm guessing it's probably his shirt and his, and his jacket in that area right there. So just for shits and giggles I'll show you. You know, let's say I was adjust the temperature all the way down. So as you can see it, as I make it bluer, this area is moving more towards the blue sections. Um, I'll just undo that. There are two boxes here. This is the broadcast safe and this is the HD safe. Basically, do not go past this bar. Uh, I know a lot of people really like to be heavy on the saturation and as you go higher, oh wow, the colors really pop and it looks beautiful. No, it doesn't look that good. <laughs> Um, so don't go too heavy on the saturation. I would say maybe, I don't know, 105, something like that. So
So this is looking a little bit warm, maybe just a little bit. So I'm gonna go over to the curves and uh, you can actually select each color channel and adjust it uh, separately as you can see in the parade here. Um, it's adjusting the, the channels uh, separately. So I'm gonna bring red down just a bit to kind of be on the level with the green and the blue. And I'll do the same thing with the blue, but I'll bring it up just a bit. And then I'll bring everything up, which is the white. When you combine red, green, and blue, you get white. So I'll bring everything up just a bit. And the curves are very sensitive. You, you don't have to go overboard on this. Hue saturation curve, this is actually a, a cool little nifty thing too. Um, if you want to separate like a, a certain color and make it more uh, saturated or the opposite as you can see it's a little bit saturated in the red and yellow still so um, I selected the red here and it creates these dots you can add more if you want and you can really just adjust the colors as you can see as I'm bringing down the color it's kind of taking away that yellow look uh, and if I go up it's the opposite um, so I'm just gonna Maybe have his facial tones kind of pop out more, kind of the red and the orange. Um, you don't want to make him look dead, so that looks pretty good. Maybe back up off a little bit with the saturation. something like that cool uh, I'm gonna up this contrast just a bit uh oh ding 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 look at that reds hitting the zero which is not good so if you get this here this is the kind of the darker reds and just bring it up problem solved and as you can see you know it's kind of going towards red and yellow a lot but um, there is a lot of a lot of red and yellow in this uh, in this frame, so it's not a huge huge deal. Um, again, if it looks good, use your eyes um, and kind of use these as a guide. So if you go down to color wheels, kind of the same thing. You can adjust the mid tones, the shadows, and the highlights separately. If you want to go for that old you know late 2000s look of like you know blue shadows and kind of orangey highlights kind of go with that and just have fun with that and kind of go overboard which kind of looks very filmy let's just kind of up the contrast see what it looks like so yeah that looks kind of filmy but it looks ridiculous in what I'm doing so I'm gonna reset that I'm gonna bring the reds down just a bit Okay. Um, HSL secondary, basically it's kind of that, you know, Sin City look where you can separate a color and, um, you know, change it to a different color. They're going to be a different, you know, as you can see as I go to red, it chooses all these red colors and you can adjust the parameters and everything, and, but uh, we can save that for another tutorial. Uh, last but not least on here is vignette. Uh, you can get dark or you can get light. Vignettes are kind of shown a lot. You know, it's kind of, it definitely has that film look. I tend to use it in a lot of my videos. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a dark vignette here. Adjust the midpoint. I don't wanna make it too big. Uh, so around there. I'll make the roundness the way it is, and then, you know, feathering is just, you know, regular feathering, and I'll just feather just a tiny bit. That looks good. Cool. So, I'm just going to turn everything off here. I'm going to go to effect controls, and then just turn off this lumetri color here. That's the before, and that's the after. So there you have it. Very simple lumetri color within Adobe Premiere. Very simple, very down and dirty, gets the job done, and, you know, looks pretty good. So I have a quick announcement. I started a Patreon not too long ago uh, and I would highly recommend being a patron to my channel. And the stuff that I put out is 
extremely valuable. Um, I don't know if you guys know of the website lynda.com, but it's an educational video where you, you know, there's online videos teaching you how to do different programs. What I'm teaching you is on par with Lynda, maybe even better because it's entertaining. Lynda.com, it's $30 a month and what you're seeing is free. So uh, the more patrons there are, the more videos I will pump out, the more I will teach you about editing. So please be a patron, feel free to donate however much you want. You'll see on the page that there are rewards that are uh, extremely valuable and you won't get anywhere else unless you're a patron. So link is in description, give as much or as little as you want. I don't care, as long as you're a patron, it's fine with me. Like and subscribe this video. Uh, if you want me to try a certain beer, let me know in the comments. Um, if you like this comment and comment that you liked it, I will chug a beer in the next video. If you want me to cover something, let me know, I will cover it. And I'm listening to the comments, I'm responding to everything, so yeah. I mean, <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>